Wilbur and Orville Wright, the first men in the history of the world to pilot a heavier than aircraft in sustained flight under power and control. The Wright brothers were great pioneers in the way they approached the problem of flight. The speed about 40 miles an hour, altitude, as you see, about 75 to 100 feet. There are a lot of different ideas about what an airplane should look like and what the wings should look like, but there's not all that much data out there. They combined empirical studies in a wind tunnel with the actual desire to build an airplane and learn how to fly it. MIT brings that combination to the next level. Ready? To really build the tools, build the instruments, right, take off. the data, compare it to the physical principles and understand what you're doing. What we have done is largely focused on the software challenges. Uh, what are the algorithms that allow different kinds of sensor information to be brought together and fused into a consistent estimate of where the vehicle is and what's around it? How do you plan uh, trajectories through the environment that are safe, that allow the vehicle to move uh, quickly and without collision? How do you incorporate information about what's in the world? How do you incorporate sensor information that tells you what's changing? And how should the vehicle construct new plans in order to react to that new information? Small air vehicles are just going to become part of our everyday existence. They're going to be a new source of information about the world, and they're going to be a new way to move things around. And we're just going to take it for granted 100 years from now. There is the systems problem of how do you integrate these vehicles safely? How do you integrate these vehicles reliably? How do they do all the things they need to do without getting in each other's way? I mean, that's a huge research problem that's going to take many years to solve. And I think there's an, an opportunity for us as a department to really be part of the solution. The idea was design an airplane that could save 70% fuel. All right, tunnel on. MIT's model for a research university has always been that the best way to educate students is get them involved in the research. Start at zero, idle, hold for two minutes, get the okay. Yeah. Increase power to 14,500. Each person in this department has some kind of drive within them, some kind of problem that they want to solve. The SPHERES project is one of the really cool projects in the Space Systems Lab. They actually have satellites inside the ISS that they can control and send different algorithms to to improve the way that we design satellites and operate with the astronauts. Like Greg and Katie, I studied science, math, and engineering at MIT and it's taken me on a wonderful path of discovery and adventure. We have two different motors um, and the way the pitch is controlled is by a servo that can tilt the entire kind of axis. The main strengths of the department are its people. Its faculty, its students, uh, its industrial partners, its alumni. It's really the community we have been fortunate to be able to create. You're going to go a lot faster if you go straight, as opposed to if you're zigzagging. So control is, the, is really the, what makes or breaks this competition. The best part of each and every day that I have here is meeting with my students working through research problems. We are incredibly fortunate at MIT to have the best students in the world. It's the people around you that definitely keep you going and that's one of the main things I love about this department. So we're trying to enable astronaut performance on the moon or Mars, get back to the planet, and it's kind of extreme. We're really going to be going up very steep terrain. We're going to be going down, looking at craters. How can we design spacesuits and life support systems to enable that exploration? If I'm going to design a suit that applies pressure directly over your skin, essentially I'd like it to be a second skin. And we think this patterning is really important. I like to describe it lots of times as a smart zipper. So yeah, you know, you don this, you put it on, it's comfortable but maybe a little bit loose. And if you apply then the active materials and it shrinks it up to get to our desired pressure state. Soon we may overpopulate the Earth. We may actually need to look outward. We're going to have a lot of intelligent systems in the future and more automation and more intelligent automation. Archaeology is like, you know, discovering more about our past and understanding of where we've been. And I kind of see Aero Astro as like understanding of where we can go.